That's the tradition of Italian cooking, is to do your own thing. None of the guys who I know that were involved in setting those rules actually follow those rules. So what we're going to do is we've got some pizza doughs here that we're not going to make a pizza out of. Later on, we're going to throw those doughs in the oven, right on the coals, some of them, just to, and get them charred up and have them come up and maybe puff up and pop up. And when they come out, we're going to create toppings that you can you would then tear the, the pizza dough up and use it as kind of dipping. So we're deconstructing a pizza, coming at it in reverse with great toppings, and, and it's a great party idea. And so this is one that uh, Brad has done a whole posting on, um, uh, a fig dish that essentially fresh figs cut in half and we're gonna drench them in some olive oil. And really coat them in olive oil. And we're just gonna cook, cook them for a little bit. Even though these figs are relatively sweet, I've got some brown sugar here. I'm gonna put some brown sugar to caramelize them. To push it. We're pushing flavors here. It's all about flavor delivery, right? So we're pushing flavors. So John, this is, and again, you can tell me if any of these things that we're doing resonate with, you know, sort of the dishes that you know out of tradition or if mm -hmm. these are just totally out of our head. In my opinion, tradition is what we have when we forgot where we stole something from. So especially, especially in Italian cooking, the tradition was always to borrow, to adapt, to bring foods from other cultures. The Romans marched through the whole known world, and when they marched through the world, they brought back exotic food, and that's the real tradition of, of Italian cooking, is that adaptability and that openness to doing new things. So if you see something and you say, well, gee, that doesn't look like anything that my grandmother taught me, or that doesn't look like anything that they do in the local Italian restaurant, the creativity is the real tradition. I'm gonna throw in some garlic now while we're getting our dishes going, some, some just whole cloves of garlic, still in the skin. So we're gonna oven roast them with a lot of olive oil. So we're kind of roast fry them all at the same time. And just to soften them up and you can use it like butter and squeeze that on your dough later. I've got, I've got the figs in here. I'm gonna take a look at them. We'll see how quickly they're gonna cook. We have it pretty hot because we want things to cook fast. So this is not, the sugar's just starting to melt. The, these figs can go for a few more minutes. Instead of making, uh, you know, like tomato sauce, pizza sauce, we're gonna make a uh, sort of a, a coarse chop, the chunky marinara, um, which is essentially tomatoes, whole plum tomatoes. And these are our favorite tomatoes. These are the uh, Bianco de Napoli tomatoes. You, you use these as well, I right? Do. I'm gonna I pour, we have about a half a can here. I'm just gonna pour what we left, have left in this can, and then I'm gonna crush them with my fingers and just break them up, uh, not puree them. We're not gonna put them on like a pizza sauce. We're gonna actually use it like a, a dipping sauce. And what, what Peter is doing right now, that was my first job in my family pizzeria when I was six years old, was to crush the tomatoes in my hands, and I hated it. I, sw I swore from when I was six years old till I was about 13, that I was never gonna end up in the pizza business. And, and since I didn't have to do it all the time as a kid, I love doing it now. Yeah. I'm just gonna throw a little extra basil in here. There's already basil in the can. I'm gonna just throw a little extra just for the brightness. I like my tomato sauce with enough salt so that I really you know, uh, feel it. And most, most tomatoes in the can are essentially under salted um, so that you can put the amount of salt you want. And every brand, if you have different brands, you have to use a different amount of salt. So I'm gonna just taste it, see how much salt I wanna put in, and then Pretty much this is gonna be ready to go. So we've got now our tomato sauce, our, core, our, our uh, rustic marinara, basically. Marinara means it's, there's no meat in it, it's herbs. So that's our, our rustic sauce. Um, I'm gonna let John talk to you about this, what's in here, and, and, and it's called Nuja. It's basically like a very spicy salami. There's paprika in it. We had in, in Calabria in the 1500s, you had a large influx of Albanians who, who, who came to Calabria fleeing the Turks. So you see a lot of that influence, almost an Eastern European influence in the foods of Calabria, including the use of paprika, which you'll find in this, in this type of salami. Um, and you'll also see that it's very hot because the area, uh, that area of Southern Italy, we use a lot of hot pepper. My dad puts hot pepper on everything. Um, so it's really flavorful. You use it in very small amounts. It's sort of a spread. If you're gonna use it on a pizza, you would wanna put it on the pizza right when the pizza comes out of the oven. I do a pizza sometimes in my restaurant where I wrap it in lardo. 
and drop it on the pizza right when the pizza comes out of the oven and it kind of melts in, dissolves in. Really nice texture. Most of these people are pretty savvy, but for people who are watching the video who, have never, who really still don't know what lardo is, can you explain what lardo is? Lardo is pretty much what it sounds like. It's lard. It's, 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 it's pure thin fat. slices yeah. of, of pure fat. It's like the bacon, but without the stri the strips of meat right. in it. You know? right. Pork. It's pork. And so, we, and we have some of that here as well. This particular nuja, which is made by our friends at La Quarcia, which which who provided us with all, all the meats that we're using here at the expo, um, it's it's they their primary ingredient is prosciutto ham. It's basically ground prosciutto into a paste. Their version of it, but I, from what you're saying, it could be made with a lot of other parts mm -hmm. of the animal. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm just scooping out the, yeah. the meat of smoked eggplants. I've cooked these, we cooked these eggplants in the wood-fired oven yesterday and really cooked the bejesus out of them. You know, we just cooked them. And we, they were in a very hot oven for about 30 to 40 minutes until they really turned into mush. And we wanted the outside to get you know charred and smoky and that smoky flavor goes into the eggplant. So we have basically some smoked eggplant and all I'm gonna do is season it up with a little salt and lemon juice. So it's in a way like a Middle Eastern baba ganoush but without you know any sesame. Uh, we, you could put garlic in here, but we're not gonna need that because we have our roasted garlic that we're doing. And then salt probably is all we're gonna need is some salt and lemon. You know, what we do have is we do have a little bit of garlic oil. That's what this, so we've got some garlic in here. We need olive oil anyway, so we've got the garlic olive oil. So we're gonna kind of season it with a little olive oil. And I'm gonna put a little salt and then taste it. John, you help me with this tasting and see if you think we need to adjust it. I, I think our sauce is pretty much ready for dipping. So I got a couple more things to do and then we're gonna start making the doughs.